Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion for Tuesday, August 7th, 2018. My, how things are busy across the tropics and even the subtropics. We have Hector out here, which will pass well to the south of Hawaii, it does appear, so that's good news. And then we have Tropical Storm Christy, newly formed, uh, pretty quickly too, and Hurricane John. You notice that Ileana has dissipated, absorbed by the larger, more potent circulation of Hurricane John. And then, kind of just like that, in the subtropics, I mean, we're talking way up here in the subtropics, the far north Atlantic, uh, Tropical Storm Debbie. And I guess it's a subtropical storm, technically, meaning that the winds are more spread out, and it's got a mix of tropical and mid-latitude storm characteristics. And then we have our typhoon over here that is headed towards Japan, and then another low-pressure area, number 18. Wow, very busy in the tropics in the early part of August. So let's take a look at things on an individual basis. This is from the 11 o'clock advisory, and it is a subtropical storm. If we click on it, you can see the map, the track map over the next few days, probably gaining enough organization with the convection thunderstorm activity being closer to the center and a more concentrated wind field that it would be a technical tropical storm. But again, this is just all textbook stuff. It's the meteorology and the, you know, you look at a, uh, at a dog and you say, oh, that's a German Shepherd. And well, that is a specific type of dog, right? And but it's still just a dog. I'm, I'm kind of ruining the analogy here. <clears throat> um, it's all just a matter of the classification. Okay, you can have a little miniature pincher, but that's also still a dog, just like a German Shepherd is. The dog is the general classification. The German Shepherd is the more specific classification of a certain species, and a subtropical storm is like a certain species of storm, but whatever. Uh, horrible. I tried. Uh, looking at this, I want to show you. This is important, okay? And I, it's kind of jumped out at me. This is the sea surface temperature uh, actual, you know, for it, it's updated always a day behind. So this is yesterday. And I want to show you this is important. Um, this is the 26 degrees Celsius isotherm right here. And that's pretty far north, okay? Uh, and I noticed that there were some areas up here, some small pockets uh, with temperature readings uh, in Long Island Sound in the low 80s. That's not going to show up on this resolution of graphic, but you know, right there, that's a 26 degree Celsius little island right there. The point is, this is going to continue to advance more to the north. Water temperatures up this way are above the long-term average. And with the approach of hurricane season's peak coming and indications that September will be busier, um, this is really going to be a potential factor. You know, when you have water temperatures that are warm enough, uh, just and just bear with me here. I'm, I'm playing what if because people need to keep it in mind. There's a lot of people that live up here. And, you know, you think about Sandy was in late October of 2012 and water temperatures up here were much cooler than they are now obviously so if you had a hurricane that was going to run the coast you know and come up like that this is just an example uh, you know, let's say that it were to happen tomorrow since we know that's not you know this is a, a decent way to kind of outline this uh, it would be moving pretty fast because there would be a trough coming you know over here to induce that northerly turn and it wouldn't have long you know, leaving 26 degree water Celsius, and then the rest of the journey would be over 25 Celsius. And the point is, this is not a good setup if we get a hurricane, okay? So uh, we're going to have to really focus on tracking whatever does develop. And we don't have to have a two week long Cape Verde hurricane like Irma or whatever, Ike. Uh, we could get something that develops down in the Bahamas like Bob in 1991 and move up the coast and you can have some real problems. So this really caught my eye how far north the 26 degrees Celsius isotherm has reached. And then of course down off the southeast coast proper, 
water temperature is quite warm in the low 80s. Nothing to worry about now, though, so, you know, don't get too riled up by it. But when I see that, that definitely gets my attention. All right, so lots of activity here in the Pacific. There's Christie and its track going to be away from land, so that's great news. John, a little bit closer to the Baja Peninsula, so there may be some fringe effects over here. Certainly some higher waves, especially that it's forecast to be a major hurricane in here for a little bit. And then it'll reach cooler waters and start to die out eventually. And if we go and look, there's the leftovers of Ileana that has rotated around the circulation here of John and been absorbed into that, this Fujiwara effect, as they call it, uh, they being atmospheric scientists. So there you go. It's uh, really active, and I don't have a good satellite picture of Hector. It's moved over to the edge of um, the GO-16 uh, field of view. But, you know, again, looking at, you know, did I even, yeah, there it is. I was thinking, did I have a map? Of course I do. It will pass fairly far to the south of the uh, big island of Hawaii. And, you know, there will be an increase in surf and swells, as I have mentioned, coming from the southeast originally, or initially, and then as it passes, those swells will come in from the southwest. Okay, so be careful if you're heading out there, but no worries. No worries from Hector, no worries from Christy, and no worries from John. So I don't see anything else over the next week to 10 days that indicates any threats to Hawaii directly. You know, there'll be an enhance of some of the trades through here, uh, the northeast flow, and maybe some upslope rain and showers, etc., as uh, Hector passes by. But that's about the extent of it, all right? Atlantic Basin, so here's uh, Debbie, subtropical storm Debbie. And it really got its act together quickly once the upper-level winds cooperated. And that's also an important signature even though this is way up here close to 40 degrees north latitude, which runs right through there, um, you know, again, you get a system that comes off Africa and it struggles, and then it gets over here to the southwest Atlantic, and, you know, this is all just being presumptuous. Uh, shear down here, et cetera, going from west to east. But if it's nice and calm up here, these systems can really get their acts together very quickly. And this system developed from an upper level cold core low and now has uh, made its way over water that's just warm enough. I looked at the uh, sea surface temperatures up here and they're right around 26 Celsius or so, which is right about 79 and a half degrees Fahrenheit, something like that. And look, you know, it's trying to get its act together and become more banded in its structure. You can see one there, pretty solid band here, another one on the south side. And that's way up in the friggin' North Atlantic. So imagine what's going to happen, and I'm just trying to be real here, if we get something developing where the ocean heat content is much higher and you get a period of, you know, 10 to 20 days where conditions are favorable, and we could really have some trouble. You don't have to have a mega season like last year, like 05 or 08. A lot of people forget about how destructive and active 2008 was six landfalls in a row some of them were weak but a couple of them weren't you remember Gustav and Ike all right and you know 04 was very busy of course as well from August through the middle to latter part of September this season looks like it's going to hold off until the latter part of August into September uh, unlike 04 which really started there at the beginning of August and you notice that there are changes starting to happen out here, more in the way of just little popcorn convection showing up through here. It's a slow and gradual process when you have a background state that was already not, you know, basically it was non-conforming to a busy season. And we're going to examine on Thursday the sea surface temperature anomalies again out in this region. Uh, and I'm going to show you a hint of that in just a minute. They are quickly you know, the overall temperatures are rebounding, and we're going to be at the precipice of uh, slightly warmer than normal in the main development region. You'll see, it's coming. All right? In the Pacific here, just to reiterate, uh, so this is the Baja right here, and there's John and the remnants of Ileana kind of tucked in there. There's Christy. Neither of these systems will pose 
a major impact threat to Mexico. But you do have some potentially heavy rain through here as uh, John passes by well off the Baja Peninsula. So one clue that I will give you here, when all of this activity wanes away and we stop having this parade of storms, you know, once these die out, then the upward motion that's happening here, all this air is rising up in the atmosphere. It's too bad I can't show you this in 3D. And it's creating this almost like a subtropical jet of westerly winds that come across because the air is rising here and then it's sinking over here in the Atlantic Basin. And once that stops in the eastern Pacific, and it will, then the Atlantic Basin will have an opportunity to spring to life. It's very easy to track this, and usually it's about uh, 10 days, maybe 14 days, where you have one basin that's very active, and then it matures, and the next basin will take over. So we saw it in the West Pack, now it's in the central to eastern Pacific, and eventually it will spread into the Atlantic. And we can see that here. This is from Ben Knoll, again, our uh, Twitter friend down in New Zealand, pointing out, yep, right here in the main development region, trades are expected to be slower than normal over the next 10 days from the uh, euro. And that's going to allow more warming of the main development region uh, in this area. I think I can click on that and make that stop. So, yeah, you know, this is representative of a weakening of the trade winds, uh, also a little bit weaker through this area, but then they're going to pick up again later in August, it does look like, sort of stunting the growth of the El Nino. But this next tweet, we can see it is happening. You know, uh, I don't, uh, should ask, what's the data source? Because I noticed on Tropical Tidbits, the CDAS was still like, I don't remember, I think it was like negative 0.33 or something. Um, it doesn't matter. Both of them show this drop and then this big spike upwards. But the uh, data that uh, Ben Knoll is citing here, you know, the MDR is now just, you know, 0.919 Celsius below the long-term average. And then, you know, he's right. The Atlantic will not stay quiet forever. All right? And he doesn't have a dog in this fight. He's over in New Zealand, and he's just showing us these signs of what's coming. And it's not a guarantee, of course, but... Um, the ship is going to leave the harbor. I've been talking about that. It's just going to take longer than usual. All right. And then the last thing, and this is very important too, uh, also from Ben Knoll here, the Euro, the dailies continue to show in this diagram here. I think this is called a Hovmuller diagram. You got to look that up uh, and make sure that's how you pronounce it. But, and I know it's like, what in the world am I looking at? So you try to superimpose in your brain all of this over the map down here. This is a Mercator projection map. So this is the present time right here. This is where we are now. And going down uh, is the future. And so another way to look at it is if this was on a conveyor belt, this would be moving up in time. So this is out in the future, and so this is headed this way in time. So right now, you look at this, and this is transposed over here, it's negative. Sinking, uh, the upward motion just isn't there in the Atlantic Basin. And you see over here all this green, and you can superimpose that here and here, and that's where the upward motion is, okay? So out in time, it looks like it's going to get even more negative in the Atlantic, if that's uh, possible. And then, as we get towards the latter part of August into September, this period of favorability starts to come in, encompassing pretty much the entire Atlantic Basin. And that's what he's putting here with negative and then positive eventually. Negative then, positive in the future. All right, so, you know, take this time, like I've mentioned before, sit around, you know, you watch the video and everybody's watching TV, so to speak, and then outside the window a hurricane comes. It's not that dramatic, but uh, use this time to do little things. You know, go buy an extra gallon or two of water, you know, bottled water, put it on the shelf. Those Deer Park gallon, uh, those are great. I like those. Uh, after I use them, I can fill them up with tap water if I need to. And they're like a dollar plus or minus at Walmart. Uh, get a couple of extra gas cans. You know, make sure your generator, for goodness sakes, is 
in good working order. Go check it out. And if it's not, take it to a small engine repair shop. These are all things you can do now. You know, make sure the car, oh yeah, please make sure the car is tuned up. So if, if you have to evacuate, call your insurance company. You know, just say, hey, you know what? Uh, that Mark Suddeth guy said that September might be kind of busy. In case it is, and I get hit by a hurricane, uh, what do I need to do if I have a claim? And they may laugh at you. I mean, hopefully not. Oh, you don't have to worry about it. It's supposed to be a quiet season. You won't have to file a claim. Well, really? Okay, well, nevertheless, what do I have to do if I have to file a claim? Be persistent, all right? You know, people look at this forecast of a slower season, and some people dismiss it as nothing will happen. And while that may be very well true for most of you, for those of you that something does happen, I want you to be ready and have a less stressful time dealing with it. So making these things done, getting them done now, that can help you. And that's what I've been doing. I've been getting all my equipment ready for when I go out into hurricanes because they're not all going to hit Wilmington, I hope. Uh, in fact, it would be nice if none of them hit here, honestly. Anyhow, little things now make a big difference later. Trust me on that. All right, so that's it for today. I am Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com. That's my site. If you haven't visited before, I'm on Twitter. Also on Patreon, check me out on those places. You see the web addresses there, my handle on Twitter. And that's it. I'll have more for you tomorrow. Thanks for tuning in. We'll chat again on Wednesday.